And the funny thing about that story about Peter walking on the water, here he is obeying the word of God. So obeying God doesn't stop storms either, as he was saying. He's obeying the voice of Christ saying, come. He's walking on the water. And it seems successful until he just starts sinking. Well, it wasn't sin that caused him to sink. He didn't backslide. He didn't start cussing on the water. That was another time. Uh, he, there, was no, there was no sin involved with his sink. But how is it that your life can start sinking and you're obeying God? Focus. We're in a pandemic. We're in a storm right now. And though we are obeying God, we cannot afford to take our eyes off of Jesus. Your friends might be on the boat. They can watch social media. Your friends might not. They might be on the boat. But you got boat riders and then you got water walkers. <laughs> Believers, we are the water walkers. And we cannot afford to take our eyes off of Jesus. We don't have the leisure of Twitter all day. We're, we're, we're on the water. We don't have the leisure leisure of a public opinion uh, and being exposed to that consistently all day. We don't have the leisure because we're on the water. We have to keep our eyes on Jesus. And then another amazing thing Rich said amongst all the great things he said is that pandemic, pandemic or calamity is always a space for opportunity with the believers. It's the opportunity. The storm for Noah was an opportunity for him to be innovative and hear God. Like, I want you to build something that has never been in this earth before. I want you to create a system that can endure the storm that the world has never seen. So here is Noah expecting a storm to come, but he's building something to sustain himself in it. What is God telling you to build that can sustain the storm you're in? He's causing you to be creative. He's causing you to be fruitful. He's calling you to be innovative. Do it. It helps you storms and fires. Now I'm going to the Hebrew boys. I gotta, I gotta stop before I run around this whole studio. <laughs> but the Hebrew <laughs> Storms Let's and go. fires help you, help you and others to see God differently. The Hebrew boys are thrown into a fire that does not cut off. The ones that it was seven times hotter. The ones that threw them in, the big buff soldiers, died just from the heat of throwing them into the furnace. And here they are chilling in the fire. Woo. Here they are chilling in the pandemic. Here they are having a conversation with the son of God in the fire. So never lose your conversation even in the fire. Keep talking to him. Never lose your prayer right. life even in the fire. Keep talking to him. Because what's going to happen is uh, the perspective of the Hebrew boys didn't change, but those that watched all the councils, all the prop, all the princes, and the, they said, whoa, God is able to keep even in the fire, and the legislature and the law changed to support the God that they served. So uh, it's, it's going to change the people that are watching. There are people watching how the believers go through pandemic. I'm still praying. I'm still trusting God. I'm still worshiping. My hands are still raised in victory, and it'll change the perspective of those that are watching. They'll view God differently. So it's an amazing opportunity for the believers to actually put the word of God in context. Most of the scriptures were written for this context. It wasn't written for the general assembly every week and the youth conference and the small. It, it was written for as for me and my house. So it feels like a quarantine. It feels like a shutdown. But here's our opportunity to apply the scriptures in context. Good. No weapon formed against me. I got the weapon of stress in my mind. How do I apply the word in context? We've gotten so used to the things of God that we probably have veered from the voice of God. We become more Martha mm. than Mary. And we, we, we think that doing the work or the service for Christ validates our connection to him. Not so. We cannot get so wrapped up in the systems. Even when Jesus, I really got to be quiet now. <laughs> Even when they went and Jesus was a young boy, 12 years old. And uh, uh, when, when he was left at the tabernacle when they found him teaching, when they came back, the Bible says they left the conference. They left the convention a day's journey and did not know Jesus was not with them. May we never create systems 
and not recognize God is not in it. Mm. May we never create industry right. and not even realize we're moving forward without Jesus on board. So I think this pandemic helped us kind of to stop the systems, stop the industries, and kind of check what we're anchored in and who we're anchored in. And it's time to realign ourselves with the voice and the power and the presence of our Father. Amen. I'm excited. Come on with it. <laughs>